Okay, everybody, good afternoon. So the last time I left off, we were working on Linux challenges here on my Kali box on Try Hack Me. Um, this is actually the Learn Linux room, but I'll go back to the dashboard and take you back to where I left off. Um, looks like there's a ton of rooms now with the paid subscription to Try Hack Me. 188 public rooms, probably even more to play around with. Um, but anyways, I was 16 to 39 questions done on the Linux challenges. And let's see if we can kind of knock out a little bit more. Um, all right. So, let's see where we were here. Linux challenges. I probably have to deploy the machine again. So, here we go. Deploy the box. I think I have to go through and connect to it again, so... Uh, no, I don't want notifications. Probably have to open VPN again. Okay, so... As long as this says initializing... Uh, yeah, I guess that might be okay. So then we'll go new window hide the other one and we'll connect back to this box um, if I remember right I think we can just go back in as Gary here so SSH Gary at 10.10.241.87 box might not be up yet Make sure that we actually got in on our VPN here. So, come on, it says like session initialized. Here's the access page. No, no dashboard. Oh, access, Jesus. Access. Not bigger box. This isn't connected. TLS handshake failed. What's going on here? What is going on here? There we go. Initialization sequence completed. Okay. Now we should be good. There we go. Okay, so yes, we're going to connect to Gary. Um, we'll go back to the room that we're in, which is Linux Challenges. So I'm under the Getting Started Linux Challenges. And the last video we did, we got through the first 16 questions and we got a little stuck. Um, so Linux Challenges, Gary's password is let me in. Okay, so here we are. Um, and if I remember right, I want to connect in as Bob as well. So let's go to well, I don't know if I can credentials are in flag one for Bob. Okay, so we'll Cat out flag. Okay. Why am I not typing here? Of 
or something wants to be screwy with me. Something is not in the mood to play today. Initialization sequence is complete. Like I went in no problem here, so what's going on? Seems like we always have something going on here, huh? It's like I lost my VPN connection yet again. Okay, so we're going to do something here. We're just going to reboot the Kali box. We'll let her go down and come back up really quick. First step in IT troubleshooting. If you don't know what's going on, turn it off, turn it on again. See if that's the cause. Yeah, Kai, I might have had a connection running from the last time. That's entirely possible. If I was suspending the virtual machine like I did when I took the break, I thought would have killed that process, but maybe not. Okay, so... Here we are, we're back. All right, looks like no problem there. Well, now we'll go out to try hack me back to the dashboard. Sweet. Figure the more I keep doing the streaming, the more I'll get actually in the feeling of getting everything set up right ahead of time. Okay, so SSH Gary at 10.10.241.87. Gary's password has let me in. All right, here we are. Okay. So run the command flag 11. We did all that. So find flag 15. So flag 15 is ver uh, information about the system. So let's go up. Um, let's go into the etc directory. And if you look for at release here with an asterisk um, in the etc folder, you will see flag 15. Hey, you are hacker. How's it going? Welcome. And I encourage all of you, if you aren't from Discord, which I think everyone is right now, but if you're not, get on ur-hacker.com, check out the missions they have there, join the Discord, be a good time. Okay, so we'll submit that flag. So now flag 16 lies within another system mount. So let's go to where Linux stores system mount information, which is in the media folder. See what we got. Just one sec.
Yeah, so like I said in streams before, um, I have a wife who is in isolation for COVID-19 right now, and three kids running around the house like crazy, so fun times. Yeah, from that day Tom was never seen again. Okay, so we're in the media folder, that's where mounted system information is, so looks like we'll follow the yellow brick road here. Flag, that's cute. Let me guess. Flag, let me guess. Six, flag 16 is okay. And they named it as a directory. That's cute. So we'll copy that. Post this into here. Okay. So now it says log into Alice's account using her private key and get flag 17. But up here it says update. Alice's private SSH key doesn't work. Her password is try hack me one, two, three. So we will try that first. So let's see, new window. Well, SSH Alice at 10.10.241.87. Okay, and run is Alice, and there's flag 17. So we'll cat that. And. Paste that in, that's the next one. Flag 17, all right. Find the hidden flag 18, so hidden. So every time I think that something's hidden, I'm thinking ls all, so ls dash a. And there is a dot flag 18, cat dot flag, if I can spell here. Oop, cat dot flag 18. You are a hacker wants to see some action, yo. What do you want to see? Read the 2345th line of the file that contains flag 19. So, how to read a given line in a file with Linux. Get specific line. Okay, so it looks like we've got a little bit of a command with said here. Let's paste that out. Flag is this file, flag 19, and they want us to read line 2345. 2345. Okay, well, there we go. That's a little easier. So, all that's doing is using our carriage return as a delimiter um, and counting down 2,345 of those. Paste that. All right, so we are done with task number three in the Linux challenges. Okay, so task four, find and retrieve flag 20. Oh, okay, this counts, as, this counts as action, good. Okay, so where is flag 20 at? Well, let's, I bet we're still on Alice. Oh, it's right there, so cat flag 20. Okay, so we did some hash stuff before, and we talked about Base64 in one of my previous strings. Uh, this looks like Base64, ending in an equal sign. So let's cat that, and we'll pipe it over to Base64 and look to decode it. Okay. That was pretty simple. So I've got flag 20. So, stick that over a little bit there. 
I think I'm going to need to get a third monitor to make this streaming a little easier. Inspect the flag21.php file. Find the flag. Okay, so where is flag21? So it does say that we... Uh, in one of the previous task ones, it does say that we'll probably have to switch accounts to find stuff. It doesn't really tell me where here to look for it in Alice. Um, so let's go back to Gary and see if it's there. Flag 24 is there, so we'll have to remember that. But we are on flag 21, so let's go and look at flag 1 again. Because that gives me bobs. So we'll do another new window here. Melissa Sachin is bob at 10.10.241.87. And Bob's password is Linux rules, which indeed it does. Let's see if it's there. Oh, there's flag 21. Okay, so. Okay, so. Let's see what happens if I use less. Hmm. Okay. So it looks like flag 21 is this little bit here. Flag 22. So flag 22 is in Alice's directory again. Okay, so that is hex. So... Yeah, I definitely need a third monitor. I, I don't know how to get the chat up and what I'm showing you guys. Like, I need, like, holy crap. I do not have enough room on my screen to show everything. I don't even know if there's a way I can pop the chat out. I don't even know where I'd put a third monitor yet. Yeah, if I shrink the Streamlabs OBS down too far, it just makes the chat disappear. Okay, so this one's hex. So the cool thing about Linux, like everything's freaking built in here with Kali, is I can pipe this to XXD, which is a hex output tool, and I can convert it. And if you have any questions about what these switch commands do, feel free to open a box on your own. Um, and just use man pages. So you can type man, cat, or man, xxd, or either of those with a dash dash help at the end. Um, and that'll, that'll provide with what all those do. So there's flag 22. So now flag 23 is in the same spot. So I love the clear command because I can clear my screen up. So flag 23, um, according to the trihackney dashboard, it says locate read and reverse flag 23. So cat flag 23, so I need to reverse that. I guess I could just kind of hardcore do it and type it, EA529, do it that way. But there's an even easier way, flag 23, type it to reverse. And there you go. Okay, so now how do we do flag 24? So this is where we get into some... A little bit more real stuff. So flag 24 was in Gary, I think. Yeah. So so that looks like freaking garbage. Um, if I cat it, it, says analyze the flag 24 compiled C program. Find a command that might reveal human readable uh, strings when looking in the source code. Okay. So let's clear that screen again. 
And let's do strings. Flag 24. One of the things I said in my previous stream is the file command, right? So file flag 24. You see that this one is an act, actually an executable. Um, but it says it wants me to analyze it and find it in strings. Another great tool for if files are concatenated together, um, isn't installed on this machine I'm SSH'd into, but binwalk is another one that'll kind of tell me like if there's uh, three things concatenated together into one file, like a JPEG, a TIFF, and a zip. We'll kind of walk through the file, walk through it, binwalk, get it? And it'll kind of tell me what's going on there. So we'll run strings on flag 24, see if we can find anything readable. So flag 24 is hidden string. There it is. So I just need to paste that in the strings. Flag 25 does not exist is the hint. No answer needed. So I guess I can click complete on that. Flag 26. Find flag 26 by searching the all files for a string that begins with 4bceb and is 32 characters long. Okay. So we're going to use the find command again. Um, type will be a file. Um, and we're going to print Okay, and there's that one. So this find command is pretty powerful. You can pass uh, all sorts of stuff to it. Flag 27's, um, flag 27 is owned by the root user. So how do I find Flag 27 is owned by the root user, so it's probably not in Alice's directory. Um, it's right there. So cat flag 27, de permission denied. So hopefully Alice is a pseudoers. Whoops, and I'm an idiot. Let's pseudo cat flag 27. Um, Alice's try hack me one, two, three. Let's try this. Okay, I don't know why I didn't like the previous one, but probably just because I didn't specify the directory. So there's 27. Uh, Linux kernel version. So uname gives you all sorts of information. Um, there's there's that, and it looks like it's star dot, star dot, a bunch of stuff. It's probably that guy right there. My answer is incorrect. Um, oh, include the dash AWS. This is a virtual machine running on Amazon Web Services, it looks like. Okay, find the file called flag 29. Okay, so where is flag 29? Uh, 
All right. Uh, just one more minute, guys. Let's get back to it. So find the file called flag29. So let's quickly look through all of our guys. There's a flag29, okay. And they want us to do some stuff to it. Okay, so we're gonna go and just tell Alice to get out of here. Okay, so here's Gary. So remove all the spaces in the file. Okay, so we're gonna output the file. We're gonna pipe it to trim with a delimiter of space, because I don't want spaces. And then we'll, we'll just send it to a new file. We'll call it flag 29, whoops. Oh, fine, it can be flag 29 for all I care. I uh, hope I didn't break something there. Um, so we'll cat flag 29 again. We'll trim it. Delimiter of new line spaces. So a slash n is a new line. And we'll send it to flag 29. No spaces or new lines. Cool. And cat that. Hopefully I didn't actually destroy the file. Yeah, I'm sure I did. That's awesome. I meant to type a no space there, and I accidentally hit enter. So... Wonder if there's a way to reset my VM here. I bet if I terminate, my machine has been terminated. Let's go ahead and go back to the intro and deploy it again. SSH 10.10. .10 Gary at 10.10.72.12. Not quite there yet. Oh, still coming up. Okay, and if I remember right, Gary was let me in was his password. 
All right, so let's try this again. So flag 29 again, so we'll cat flag 29, trim the limiter of no spaces, and we'll pipe it to flag 29, no space. Okay, we'll cat flag 29 with no spaces and trim it with a delimiter of no new lines. Pipe it to flag 29 with no spaces or new lines. And then what does it tell me? Um, Split by comma, get the last element in the split. Yeah, I can just do that. Okay, answer's correct there. All right, so now we're on to task five. Finding flags in a SQL database, downloading files from the file system to your local system, and more. All right. So, use curl to find flag 30. So that tells me there's a website. So we are already logged into that machine, so let's look at localhost. And there it is. And of course now my phone's going off and I don't even know where I set it. Here we go. Okay, so using curl on that local host. And just for uh, just for curiosity's sake, let's see what that looks like. 10.10.72.12. Yep, see, there it is. So that was the same command. Um, we just brought it down ourselves this way. So paste flag 30. So flag 31 is a MySQL database name. Okay, so let's go ahead and open my SQL. It says username's root. Password is hello. And we'll tell us to show the databases. Okay, it is a database name. Well, let's see, it's probably this guy. Okay, so now I have a bonus flag question. Get data out of the table from the database you found above. So um, that's pretty easy to do in MySQL as well. Um, we're just going to tell it to use that database here. So we'll just copy and paste that down here. We'll use that database. And uh, we'll show tables. There's the table called flags. So if we want to see what's in there, yep, there's a flag inside the table. Cool. Okay, using SCP, FileZilla, or another FTP client, download flag32.mp3 to reveal flag 32, okay. So, I'm sure everyone hates, let's see if I can do this. Hmm. All right, um, I'm sure everybody hates SCP. Um, I don't really wanna play around with SCP right now either. 
but I have done this in the past, and it's try hack. Jesus, if I can type in the right spot. Um, Flag32.mp3 is try hack me 13337. Flag33 is where your personal path is. Your personal path um, is stored in your profile. It's a dot profile from your home folder. So I don't see it in that one. It's probably in one of the others. So SSH Bob at. And his is let. Nope. His is Linux rules. Um, yep, there's flag 33. Okay, so really the whole goal of this Linux challenge is to see how your Google Foo is, see, just show you a bunch of different places, um, show you a bunch of different places to find stuff. Okay, so using system variables, switch your account back to Bobby using system variables, what is flag 34? So if you print your environment, um, yeah, there's flag 34 as a system variable, right? Okay, and we only have two more to go. So flag 35. So look at all groups created on the system. So uh, GE tent group will list all the groups. And there's flag 35, so it's groups. Okay. And find the user, which is a part of the hacker group. Um, and read flag 36. Okay. So... So I'd probably have to do this on all of them, right? ID tells me what groups I'm in. So Gary is in nothing really fancy, um, his own group. Bob, however, is in the hacker group. So now we just have to find flag 36. Um, so wouldn't be in a home directory. Yeah, flag 36 was in the etc directory. Tell I've gone through this before just a little while ago. Okay, so there's flag 36. And guess what? We have completed the Linux challenges room. So there's a win for everyone there. Um, so if I still have a couple people here in the chat, which I think I do, uh, it looks like I got at least one with me still. Um, one of the things I do want to show you guys, pretty sweet tools. Um, two things. So when you install Kali, um, one of the things I'm a big fan of is upping that memory a little bit. So in VMware. Take it from two gigs up to four, which you can see right here on my screen. Um, definitely makes things go a little snappier for me. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is talk a little bit about note taking. So I use Microsoft OneNote. There's plenty of other note taking tools you can use. Uh, Microsoft OneNote is a great one, though. Um, I'll just give you a quick rundown, and then I just want to talk about screenshots a little bit. So uh, this is Microsoft OneNote. Um, you can organize stuff by uh, notebooks. You can make more notebooks if you wanted. Um, you can organize it by tabs in that notebook. And then inside that tab, you can have sub-tabs and then children pages inside those. So here under my practical ethical hacking, I've got a couple of pages, right? Five stages of ethical hacking. Um, so as we move forward through my streams, I'm hoping that when I start my PTS, I can take you through all these five stages and we can learn a little along together. Um, and then the second thing I want to show you is 
for notes. So a lot of people that you do pen testing for are going to want to see proof of something. So there's a great tool that I use called Greenshot. Um, if I pull it up here, it runs in my system tray, which is right where my camera's at. But this is what the icon looks like. It's called Greenshot. It's running for me right now. So say I found this flag here. Um, and I wanted to show that to somebody, right? In a screenshot in a report. Um, you can set your hotkey, but mine's just print screen. And then I can highlight whatever I want here. So let's say we want that. And we'll open the green shot image editor, and here's the flag. And let's say I want uh, the flag to be highlighted for people to see. I prefer to just red box things, which it's already set up for. And then if I don't want somebody to see the username or some other sensitive piece of a, you know, something I didn't want in the report, I can click obfuscate and I can hide that. Um, and that's a great tool to use. And then you can just copy it back to your clipboard and go over to OneNote, paste it in. And there we go. I've got a screenshot that I can save to use in my report for later. You know, I'm not going to show people the notes, my own personal notes, but I will kind of check these things off as I build my report. Okay, so that's a stream on Linux challenges. Um, the next time we manage to do this, let's see what we've got um, next in Try Hack Me. So if I go back to the dashboard, Um, we're in the getting started. Two out of five rooms complete. Vulnerability. 19 questions to do. So next time, we'll do some learning about active recon. We'll do some web app, at app attacks and some privilege escalation. Um, we will just deploy the machine. Task two is to gather uh, info about the machine using Nmap. So we will scan the box. So we'll do some little bit of... Uh, reconnaissance and enumeration. Um, and this walks through what Nmap does. We'll figure out how many ports are open, what version of Squid Proxy is running, how many ports will Nmap scan, if the flag dash p dash 400 was used, um, which hint dash p dash um, scans all ports. All right. Using the Nmap flag dash n, what will it not resolve? All right. Um, what is the most likely operating system the machine is running? What port's the web server on? And knowing all open services is very important. Don't forget ports on a higher range might be open. So we scan ports after a thousand, even if you leave scanning in the background. Yeah, that's that's super important when you do some uh, full-on reconnaissance. I'll typically go and scan all TCP ports. So we're going to go through this next time. Um, we'll go through this machine, Vulnversity. All the way through, we'll do an end map on it, and I will take notes as I go and show you kind of what my notes for a single host of a this limited pen test will do. You know, this time we know that we're going to just locate some directories, we're going to compromise a web server, and then we're going to do some privilege escalation. And that'll be about it. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, hit me up in Discord. Again, you are welcome over to you are hacker. Uh, Discord's channel there is where I hang out and I will see you guys later. Thanks again.